David. David, we'd better stop. Why? We have other things to think about. He won't be home for another three hours. We have to keep our minds clear. That's not going to be easy for me. I was just thinking. What about? Why don't you just come out and ask him for a divorce? He wouldn't even consider it. How do you know? Have you actually asked him in so many words? You don't know John, David. Ask him. If he says no, then he'll just have to take the consequences. Who knows, he might even say yes. If you're trying to get out of this now that it's time to do something more than just talk, when for the first time you have to give instead of only taking, then go on. Walk out the door. Only don't come back. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm not going to be an occasion. Come here. somebody good. I uh, just dropped in a few minutes ago to return those books of yours I borrowed. You're a remarkable man, David. Probably the only one in the city who returns borrowed books when he says he will. Well, I, I appreciate good things. Yes, I know. Where is Ruth? She's on the phone in the other room. Scotch? Yes, thanks. Water? No, on the rocks. We like the same drinks, too. John. Darling, it's so good to see you home early for a change. I, uh... I was hoping to be on the road before the storm broke, but we're going up to Westport for the weekend. Unless, under the circumstances, you'd rather not. Oh, of course not. I was born during a blizzard, darling. You know weather never bothers me. I was referring to a different set of circumstances. You should have fixed your face when Ruth did. Lipstick on your left cheek. All right. How long has it been going on? Two months. Is this the end or the beginning of something bigger? We love each other. Traditionally, it's the man who does the talking. I want to marry Ruth. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, that's impossible. At least not while she's married to me. You have a long wait and stolen love dies early on the vine. Anyway, David, as a playmate, she's one thing. But as a steady diet, as a wife, she becomes a dangerous and sometimes degrading habit. You hate me because I don't love you anymore. You never love me or anyone. She loves love. Of course, she does appreciate my money and gives a magnificent performance to earn it. I despise you. Do you know how extravagant she is? Every time we go on a trip, she buys up whatever country we're in. I'll admit she has acquired taste in some things. At least, he's a little better looking and somewhat more manly than Philip. 
Oh, didn't she tell you about Philip or George or any of the others? This is John's best courtroom technique. Now, does that conclude the evidence for the prosecution? Not quite. You see, I don't want to hear any more. Ruth wants a divorce. Do you? Yes. Yes, I do. On what grounds? Your infidelity? If you feel that way about her, why don't you let you tell me how to run my home, my marriage, my life? But you don't love her. You admitted it. I said nothing of the sort. I said she didn't love me or you or anyone. She has her excitements in life, and I have mine, and I paid for them without quibbling. If you could have seen how passionately she came to me for my money and my name, or how she crawls back to me after each... If you don't give me a divorce, we'll kill you, Ruth. <laughs> Some of my best cases started this way. You need a drink. You don't know what anyone needs. Can anyone ever get through to you? Talk to you? Sensibly, yes. Oh, I know. You can make it seem as if it's all my fault. You always appear as the perfect, loving husband. You've never shown me any love. You're cold, hard, and calculating. The only real love you've ever known is for your legal rule books. If you won't give her a divorce, what will you do? What will you do? You might try finding another woman with a rich husband more accommodating. Or you might try getting a job. You know, there are some men who work for their money. Well, maybe that would be an insult to a skillful parasite like you. As long as there are women, you... He won't shoot. Put it away. He didn't believe I'd shoot. He didn't think we'd kill him. Why did you do it now? Why didn't you wait for the right time? He picked the time. I didn't. I didn't know it would be like this. I never really... I never really meant for it to happen, David. That's not what you said an hour ago. What are we going to do now? What do you suppose? Wait until dark. Four hours. We have to wait here four hours? Well, what do you want to do? Carry him out now? Don't shout at me. Well, don't be so stupid. We'll do exactly what we planned. Dump him in the country. Uh, let's go into another room. Why? Uh, Come on, you better sit down. David? Hmm? Did he put doubts into your mind? What? Did he put doubts into your mind? David? You didn't believe him, did you? Believe what? All those terrible things he had to say about me. No, of course I didn't. Oh, no, I'm so glad. Because they're not true, you know. They're not true at all. Who was Philip? Philip? Philip. Oh. oh, he was no one important. Not really. I suppose I did try to fall in love with him. Or anyone, but... He wasn't important, not like you. Oh, you do believe me, don't you? I have to believe you. Whether I want to or not. But you've no idea how cold John could be. He degraded me so. I loathe. Look, him. relax. You don't have to hate him anymore. I need a drink. David. 
What are you doing? I'm going to find out how much money he's got on him. How can you touch him? I need it. This should help take care of me for a while. You'll have to phone the police on Monday. Give me a story. There'll be a long wait. How long? How should I know? We better not see each other for a month. Not at all. No. I won't go through this by myself. You're going to have to. You're going to run away and leave me, aren't you? I don't kill for something I don't want. I thought because you had killed him, you might start to hate me. It's the other way around. You're more valuable to me than ever. I wish I knew everything was going to be all right. It will. How can you be so sure? Because I have something very important at stake. What? Me? You. Well, I mean us. How can you be so calm? What do you want me to do, panic? You don't feel anything, do you? You better get a hold of yourself. You don't love me either. I thought you said you wanted a drink. You are going to leave me. There's something else. Snapshots. John and me in Florida. 1951, I think. Who's this? Chris Sedman. An attorney friend of John's. He's blind. Oh? An accident. John and me again in Mexico City. He looked happy enough then. I wish it would get dark. It's only 20 past three. I don't think I can stand it till it gets dark. What are you doing? There's a cab pulling up outside. It's Chris. Chris Sedden. That friend of John's. With the blind one? Yes. Get away from the window. Don't let the driver see you. If you don't answer the door, I think there's nobody at home. Maybe John tricked us. Anyone at home? Don't answer. Ruth? John? It's no use. I must see him. He's an old friend. Be careful. Ruth. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. I was on the telephone and the thunder. Well, the door was unlocked, so I came right in. I hope you don't mind. Of course not. Here you are. Thank you. How are you, Ruth? I'm fine. I haven't seen you for a long time. Uh, I've been away. Someplace interesting, I hope. Oh, Connecticut is my sister's place. She drove me back this morning. Oh, this feels like my usual chair. Am I right? Yes, that's right. Is John home yet? Uh, no. No, he isn't. We were going to Westport for the weekend, but he called about an hour ago and said that he had to go to Long Island to see an important client. That's funny. He told me only half an hour ago he was just leaving for home. You c called him? He said you were going away, but not until later. He asked me to come over and have one for the road. Well, something must have come up after you called him. But you said he called you an hour ago. This was only... Did I say an hour? Well, it couldn't have been as long ago as that. Well, the least I can do is fix you that drink. Oh, well, thank you. I could use one. What was that? I broke a glass a few minutes ago, and I haven't had time to clean it up yet. Your usual, Brandy? Yes, straight, please. But tell me about John. How has he been? 
I only talked to him for a minute on the phone. He works too hard. Vacation coming up soon? We hope so. Good. Where will you go? We uh, haven't decided yet. John wanted to... John wants to go to Jamaica. Here's your drink. Oh, thank you. Jamaica, huh? The last time I talked to John, he told me you wanted to go to Spain. Chris, I hope you won't think I'm rude, but after John canceled the weekend, I made a cocktail engagement. I was just on my way upstairs to get dressed. Oh, that's all right. I asked my sister to pick me up here in about an hour. So if it's all right with you, I'll just wait and have another drink. But I wouldn't want to leave you here alone. I'll be all right. You never worried about me before. Oh, yes, I have, and I do worry about you. Now, I'd feel much happier if you'd let me call a cab for you. Okay. We can share one. But I... I I'm not dressed yet, and I have to put my makeup on. Oh, it'd be so much simpler if you'd let me call a cab for you now. Or whatever you say. But let me dial, won't you? Yes, of course. I'm used to doing things myself. Let me help you. No, no, no. I like to do it myself. The table is to my left, isn't it? Yes. To your left. You have flowers in the room, haven't you? Yes, lilacs. I thought I could smell them. I love lilacs. I love to keep them in the house all the time. They're very difficult to get, you know. I, I had to send to Florida for these. The phone is directly in front of me now, isn't it? What a wonderful memory you have. When I could see, I didn't notice very much. But now that I can't see, I remember everything. Now, this dialing was quite tricky at first, but I'm... Pretty good at it now. Oh, hello. Could you send a cab right away, please, to 303 East 56? Oh, is there a stand nearby? Oh, thank you. Thank you. There may be a slight delay, the weather. So I'll just finish my drink, if I may. I'll get it for you. I left it on the table. Where are you? Getting your drink. Did you just light a cigarette? Yes. Yes, I did. I thought so. For a moment, it seemed that you were in two places at once. Here. Here's your drink. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. Chris, I'm sorry if, if we, if I seem to be in such a rush, but uh, I do have to get dressed. I understand. When John gets back, you must come to dinner and we'll have a nice long evening of talk. I'd like that. Your cab's pulling up now. There was no delay after all. Finished? Not quite. Here, let me help you. I'd rather not be helped. Oh, I'm sorry. What happened? You went just a little too far to your left. That comes of refusing well meant help. I'm all right now. I'm sorry I came at such an inopportune moment. That's not your fault, Chris. It's always good to see you. No, it's good to talk to you, Ruth. Thank you. And thank you for the drink. I'll, I'll see you soon, Ruth. My best to John. Yes, I'll tell him. You sure I can't help you to the cab? No, I'm all right. Chris? Yes? You, you won't forget the call, will you? No, I won't forget. Thanks again for the drink. Oh, 
boy, I never thought a blind man could be considered lucky, but that one was. Yeah, you were great. You don't suppose he suspected anything? Yeah, how could he? That business about the two phone calls, I... I found myself going from one light to another. It sounded awful. You got out of it all right. He knew I was nervous. He started to talk about John and me. Listen, it was bad enough, though. Let's relive it. You know, when people... Well, when they don't have sight, you never know what they're thinking. Come on. Let's forget about it. When a sister calls for him, we'll pretend there's nobody here. Did you lock the door? Did you lock the door? Now, when you phone the police on Monday, you've got to be careful about the time that John called you. Seddon must have phoned him around 2.30. Tell him John called you at 20 minutes to 3. Now, you know what you're going to say. Lieutenant, my husband and I were supposed to spend the weekend at Westport, but on Friday at 20 minutes to 3, he called to say he had to go out of town to see an important client. I didn't think anything about it. I'm used to that happening with John. And now it's Monday. He hasn't come back. I've called the office, and they don't know anything about the client... Or he's going out of town. And I'm worried, Lieutenant. Answer it. You've got to answer it. It might be somebody from John's office. Hello? Ruth? Yes? John will probably call you this evening, won't he? Probably. Would you give him a message, please? It's important. Yes, of course. What is it? Who is it? Still there. Give me a radio, quick. Who was it? Who was it? It was Chris. He had a message for John. Well, what was it? John lent him some money for an operation. And. <laughs> He can see. He can see.